Hi, um, my name is Hannah, um, and I'm not from Bratislava, actually. I'm actually from Belgium, which doesn't account for my Irish accent at times. Um, I've traveled the world a bit, so I've lived in the United Kingdom, I lived in America, and I've had um, classmates from New Zealand, classmates from Australia, so a right mixture. <laughs> Um, I wrote a book two and a half years ago, which wasn't the plan, which wasn't in my plan anyways. Maybe it was in God's plan. Um, but first I'd like to say um, thank you for letting me, or giving me the opportunity to share my part of my testimony today. And thank you, Jules, for letting me be a part of this tour, part of the tour. So. Um, Three years ago, I heard God's voice, and he told me, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I shall give you rest. It's from Matthew 11:28. During that time, when I heard God's soft voice, I felt I didn't have a relationship with God anymore. My relationship with God um, completely fell through, because I was married to an abusive husband. Just... Um, my faith, I didn't feel like God was hearing me, that God wasn't um, there anymore, that God just was gone. He, and I felt that he was very far away. And I can admit that was one of my darker moments. So when suddenly I hear God's soft voice um, tell me to leave, I left. It was in the space of two days, a decision that took two days to make. And I left and I moved into a shelter in the north of the UK and lived in a women's shelter for six months where I met other women who had worse stories than me or similar stories to me. And it was really heartbreaking to see these women with um, abusive lives who turned to drugs, who turned to prostitution and who keep going into the same same circle, negative circle, I went back. So some of these women have been in the shelter more than three times in their life. And I said, this is not going to be me. I will not go again in a shelter because it's really one of those things that I don't want to experience again because it's really, um, it's a dark place. And yet, even though it was a dark place, it was also a place of extreme peace and joy for me, it is where God met me. God met me and provided for my needs. So I didn't have a job because I suddenly had to leave my ex-husband. I didn't have a job and I didn't have money and I didn't have food. But there was the benefit side which I could get. But I didn't like going on benefits either. I preferred working. So I worked part-time. And then about three weeks after moving into the shelter, Although before that, I realized I was pregnant, but I wasn't 100% sure. But by three weeks, it was um, a definite, um, yeah, it was definite. And this was the third pregnancy. So it wasn't the first and it wasn't the second, it was the third pregnancy. So that was like five years ago. And then my son, I conceived him three years ago and moved into the shelter. And in that space, time I heard God tell me you have to go home but I didn't know when and I was waiting for my mom to invite me back home and I waited and around Easter time my mom said to me you're coming home aren't you and I was like uh, yeah but let me pray about it first and God confirmed I would be going home so I arrived home um, in at the end of July and you know, um, events, when you're pregnant, there's a lot of people who are um, happy and excited to have a baby. A baby brings hope, a baby brings new beginnings. And because our family had gone through quite a rough time with my brother losing his baby a year before me, it was for us um, a beginning of healing, a beginning of new hope. Only for that to crash um, two months later when I went, went into hospital. 
um, because I had contractions all day. And at one point during the day, I told my mom, actually, I don't think I felt my son move all day. And my mom was like, um, ooing and aahing and didn't really know what to do, what to, what to say, because she, although she's a nurse, I think because it was related to me, she became a bit um, emotional and the emotions were running high. And um, my, um, so she called our doctor and the doctor said, yeah, you should take her to the emergency room. So we were actually gonna go to a birthday party that day. And my um, mom dropped my sister and my stepdad off at the birthday party and picked up my aunt who spoke Slovak so she could translate for us. And when we got to the hospital, um, we were waiting. There was no one um, in the waiting room. And finally the doctor came up to me and told me to go to the high-risk pregnancy ward where I was met by the doctor. And the doctor said, oh, these mothers shouldn't worry because normally the baby is always all right. And so we went into this room um, where they would check the heartbeat and everything. And um, then the doctor asked my mom to leave the room with my aunt and um, suddenly I was all alone in that room, except with God, God was there. I remember having peace even though my heart was beating like really fast. And um, the doctor started speaking Hungarian, so he switched from Slovak to Hungarian. And Hungarian, I don't understand. Slovak, I can understand. And he started speaking Hungarian with the um, with the nurse, and suddenly I just decided to ask him, so what's going on? And he's like, and then he asked me, so what are you having? And I said, I'm having a baby boy. And then he's like, a long silence. And then he says, well, I'm really sorry, but there's no life. And in that moment that I heard that, I just prayed to God, please let there be a miracle. And that was the only thing that I was just praying the entire time. Please God, let there be a miracle. Please God, let there be life. Let there be life. But then I asked the doctor, please, can you let my mom come in and my aunt to come in so that they can support me? And so they came in and my mom just had to look at me and the doctor told her and it was a really weird moment because you're eagerly anticipating and then suddenly your hope crashes right to the bottom of the floor. And I remember... Um, having to go for more investigations, more tests, and then they asked me to stay, into, stay in hospital because I wanted to go home. Um, but they were like, no, you better stay. And then on Saturday, my um, mom got called out of the, the room where we were staying, and the doctor told her, um, your daughter will die if she does not give birth to her son in the next couple of days. And because they couldn't do a C-section, because C-section was too dangerous, I, it was a waiting game. So I carried my dead son around for three days and he was born on Monday, 29 September at 1.05. And I asked the doctors and nurses, can I please hold my baby? Can I please see him? And they said no. So then, of course, after that, the long journey of grief start, but only the, the real heart-wrenching tears occurred the following day, not on the day that he was born, but on the day, on the, on the next day when my mom left that hospital room, I suddenly realized, here I am, alone in this room, without my mom and without my son, and where is God in all of this? I, I was questioning God, why, why me? I've been divorced, I've lost two children before that, why are you punishing me? What did I do wrong? And God doesn't always talk to us in those moments. Sometimes he just gives us this silence so that we can um, hear his voice or we have to wait for his voice. But I did experience tremendous peace and peace in my soul and when I um, went home, I was praying and worshiping and singing to the Lord. And one of the first things my sister asked me, 
because she was on she was sick from school she asked me why are you singing and dancing and worshiping to god and i said to her it's this simple truth and it's because sebastian is in in the arms of jesus he's safe now and he doesn't have to be here he god had mercy on him so he does not have to sin and Every time I'm sad, my sister reminds me of that simple truth. Your son is safe in the arms of Jesus. And God really impacted me in that year. It was a year where I withdrew into a cave, into an emotional women's cave, where I just sat and wrote my heart out. It was a way of um, releasing all the negative pent-up emotions inside of me to, to create it into something beautiful, to create a memory, to, to reflect on what was and what was not. And God spoke to me in those darkest hours. He gave me peace, he gave me joy, and he healed my heart. He Slowly but surely, he was healing me. For a long time, I thought I wasn't gonna, that I would never be happy again, or I was afraid of hope. I was afraid of hoping because hope seem to be risky, but without hope, where are we? Is it better to live in fear or is it better to have hope? And I came to the conclusion that it's better to have hope. Even though I wanted to die at times, the life, the voice of life was a lot harder for me, harsher for me, and it was more demanding, demanding me to keep going. And yeah, I spent a lot of time in solitude reading self-help books, reading um, s stories of other women who've lost babies, which really encouraged me to keep going. And in turn, I also met other women who've lost babies, and their stories are equally inspiring. And God um, can turn tragedy into something beautiful. He can turn it into something wonderful. And I had a vision when I was 18 to um, be ministering to a lot of broken women, but I didn't know that it would be in this situation. And so God does um, turn something negative into something positive. Even though I don't have my son, my son is still living in me and in this book. And this book contains poetry that I wrote, um, letters to my son, and also reflections of like deep emotional turmoil inside of me. And I would like to share a poem with you guys today that I wrote um, during one of my really bad panic attacks. And the poem is not just a poem, but it's also a prayer of my heart to God to help me to overcome this sense of loss. And this is it, painfully broken. When all the world is looming dark, I watch my reflection in the stained glass and see that my heart is stained, but darker. I'm lying here alone, tired, weary. All the while, no one hears my cries of deep heartache. Alone in the world I am, painfully broken, with each minute that disappears into nothingness forever. My heart aches for my little boy that once lived within me, where two heartbeats became one, and time away from him stretches further and further into a, the weary distance. O oh Lord, don't you know how much it hurts to walk this road of brokenness and battle the winds and the storm and the glaring sun and the blizzards of desolation that loom like dark clouds over my head? O oh Lord, don't you know how much I wanted to be my son's mum. This journey of sadness is too heavy to carry alone. O oh Lord, please help me. Walk with me as I tread this lonely path, burdened with deep grief. Help me, Lord, to seek your kingdom first. Help me to be joyful in spirit. All the while, the deep grief gnaws at me. Sadness unfulfillment multiplies as I learn once more to trust in you. O oh Lord, don't you know my little boy was my rainbow? I loved him more than myself. I would have fought all the world to keep him safe. Don't you know I would have taught Sebi all about you, Lord? Why does it have to hurt so much, the missing, the pain, the loneliness that never ends, the ache of wanting to hold my child near my chest? O oh Lord, I can't do it anymore. Hear me, please. 
help me, I cry out once more. And this is a poem I wrote. Um, I know I was in a really dark, dark place. But God can talk to us through words. He can talk, talk to us through music. He can talk to us through nature. It can be anything. And my purging was sitting in my room and sp spending daily time with God and just reading the Bible and just clinging on to him. And the one thing that I learned is that whatever situation you are in, whether it's good or bad, God is with you always and you should always cling on to him and never, never, in my opinion, never be without God because God will always carry you through. So we can't just rely on God in the emergency situation, but we should 24 hours, seven, 365 days per year. And that is my goal in life. I want to serve him and I want to worship him. And my encouragement is that if you're going through a really dark time, cling on to the Lord and just trust him and he will see you through.